All right, Giza Marozzi against Frank Marshall in Carlsbad, September 2nd, 1907. Marozzi white, Marshall black. Pawn e4, pawn e5, knight to c f3, knight to c6, knight to c3, knight to f6. A four knights game. The type of game you like to show your students. And then the Spanish variation. And here we got this interesting move here. Saying, please take my pawn. And he says, thank you very much. You must have known tomorrow's my birthday. <laughs> and Marshall plays bishop to b4. And the bishop retreats to e2. Queen to e7. This is a very unusual structure here. Well, what do we have? Two attackers, one defender, overpower can be played. You could remove one of those, that, the one defender as well, with bishop takes c3 here, I would think. I would think you could also play well, I would take the knight first, because then the knight could take its place. That's left completely unprotected, though. Let's see what he did play. He, he took the knight first. And d takes c3, putting the other knight in danger. Well, now I would take this bishop with my knight. He did. This has still only got one defender, so this can be overpowered. Two attackers, one defender. And he, rather than trading queens and allowing the black knight into a better position, he, bl he um, blocked and said, would you like my g-pawn? You gave me a gift, I'll give you one. And he said, no, I'll just castle. Now we have an opposite side castling situation. These always make for exciting games. As one side launches his attack on the king side of the board and the other side is going to launch his attack toward the queen side of the board the first d6 to get the bishop out of bed on f3 queen to c4 pins the knight Bishop to d4. What about this pawn? Can that be taken? Looks good to me. I don't see any reason that would be considered poisoned. If it was me, I probably would take it. <laughs> I'm very materialistic chess player. And he said, ah, I think I'll put an attack on your queen before I do anything else and take control of the open E file. Marozzi plays queen to F2. He still doesn't want that free pawn. 
And look at this evaluation meter. Huh. Okay, let's see if we can figure out why that gives white a one and a half pawn advantage. That I'd like to know. Really can't quite make it out in my mind. Plus my bleary-eyedness is really wearing on me here. Feel free to chime in out there and viewer land. Let's see how it unfolds. B3 says, All right, I've given you enough chances to take my free pawn. No more. Run away. Queen A6 says, Are you sure? Because I've got this attack here. You know, you could now... Create a weakness here if you're not if you're really bent on giving away your pawn and repositioning your king. He did. Ooh, and he took back with a counter punch. Rook takes d3. And now an exposed king. King to b2 first, securing his own pawn shield first. This is already weak. Chrissy96, greetings. Welcome to the King's Bishop program featuring today's Grandmaster. So black is going to operate on the open E file. White is going to operate on the open G file. Apparently not. White says, no, I don't want you to have that file. Rook to E1, Rook A to E8. And I'm doubling on the E file, says white. I'm satisfied with these... Not Ben Feingold is, is in the house. So white is satisfied with the weaknesses he's created in black's king's position and doesn't want to give white uh, doesn't want to give black any room to operate. And king to F8 clearly not happy with his position, but this pawn here is left as a target. So if he simplifies, I think that target can be picked off. Let's see what he does. He does simplify, and sure enough, he's going to attack this target. He's got a double attack. Fork. Only way to make it safe is King G7. The evaluation bar really loves White's position here. What's the main difference? The main difference is King safety. We have a King safety imbalance. That is the primary difference here. Queen to g4 check, king to f7. And now you can see the queen can just worm its way up. Get behind the, the 
king's house and start picking things off from behind. Sure enough, queen h5. Even though it didn't seem like the progress bar cared for that move, what, what could have been better than that? I don't see a better move than this. Why does it... Why doesn't it like queen to h5? The whole point is with this weakness is to worm your, your queen in and get behind his defenses. His queen has no ability to attack. Yeah. So with white's king perfectly safe, safe as a baby in his beddy by snuggled in a blankie and sucking on a binky. And that was the entire point of the simplification steps. Okay, he says, I'm going to attack here and defend here at the same time. But I've got check. I've got check. I can pick off your queen side and... March my pawns up faster than you can pick off my king side and march your lonely army down. That's what White is going to say here. Another option would be to just attack these directly and immediately with a move like Queen B8. Because you're going to be able to capture with tempo no matter even if he tries to save one of these pawns let's see what he picked he picked queen e7 check king g6 and he said no i'm gonna oh this was a very clever move this is de this defends g2 i know it doesn't look like it but queen can't take g2 <laughs> so, instead of picking off, he moves to f8. And he goes in and gives the check. King h6. Oh, no, it seems like I would have just picked off the pawns. I thought the entire point was to... Open this up and, and march. A little bit of dancing back and forth. What move number are we on? We're on move 32 now. So I was thinking, well, maybe there's some time control issues. Maybe White was worried that black would get a jump on him, that that uh, he wouldn't have enough time to get his pawns rolling. Queen to f2. Queen to f8 check. King to g6. Fabiano Capablanca. So pawn h5 check. King takes. Now dealing with this outside pawn. He also has an eye on this seventh rank. White taking a sweet time. He gives the check. Of course, he's not going to trade queens here. Check. King g5. And now queen c7. And now queen b7. And now another check. And, and watch this. That was a blunder. That was a blunder, ladies and gentlemen. Why didn't he play? Am I missing something? Isn't Doesn't this just win the queen? Uh, 
Oh, no, he could just block. <laughs> he could just block. For a minute there, I thought, why didn't he just play queen b7? He can just block, and apparently that would be equal. Look at the progress meter. That's why they're grandmasters, and I'm a lowly less than expert. So what did he play? He played queen takes d6, deciding that he'd rather resolve any potential promotions. And here he... Now that's interesting move. He didn't pick off this pawn. He played c4. I guess he... I guess he can run his pawn up now. I guess that's what he's saying, is I can just run my pawn. And you can't stop me. So pawn to c4, pawn to e4, pawn to c5. Now here I, I would have, I think maybe I would have picked this one off. Or just keep running your pawn maybe. Because these two pawns, pawns on adjacent files are much stronger than isolated pawns or separated pawns. Although that progress meter keeps going in white's favor. There's a check. Block. Pawn e3. Queen g6 check. King f4. Pawn to c7. Pawn to e2. Are we going to have a four queen game? No. <laughs> Check, 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 and now he's attacking here. Bind creator, king f1, check. King E1. Queen F4. Queen C8. Queen D6. King F2. Queen d8, we are going to have a four queen game, huh? No, we'll only have... <laughs> we'll only have a three queen game. And that was that. We didn't even get to the, the other queen. He resigned. <laughs> he resigned. What a game. What a game by... Today's Grandmaster, Giza Marozzi.